this is Jasmine, and I hope that you all are doing well. Today, I wanted to make our formal announcement for 2021 that we are going to be bringing back the Lunar Astrology Magic in the Moon workshop. This is a highly sought after workshop and something that I have gotten a few questions about when it's going to be uh, back and available. Um, so we are going to be having our workshop Wednesday, February 17th of 2021 at 7 p.m. This is going to be a two-part workshop, like I said. So if you are interested in taking this live, either in person at the store at Spiritual Gardens, or you can also take it online live on those days in our online classroom. I am going to be recording the full lecture as well as providing the class documents and that will be available over on my Patreon. So if you would like to maybe do this workshop self-taught, you can also access this workshop and other classes over on Patreon. I'd like to talk a little bit about the significance behind the moon. I think that this is one of the first things that a lot of us start really getting into when it comes to um, the occult, paganism, witchcraft, and really understanding the moon as so many of us feel a sacred connection to the moon and the cycles and rhythms that the moon bears. The influence that the moon has over our planetary realm as well as our internal worlds as we attune ourselves to the cycles and seasons that are connected with the moon. So in this announcement, I'm going to be going over the lesson plan, and this is for the Lunar Astrology uh, Magic in the Moon workshop. Like I said, this is a two-part workshop, so everything that we cover in this lesson plan is going to essentially be broken up into two separate workshops. So, Lunar Astrology, prepared by yours truly, um, let's look at the overview and the purpose of this workshop. So, in this workshop, we're actually going to be covering what are known as the Esbats, or the Sacred Esbats. Esbats are essentially lunar holidays or high lunar days. Um, you might have also heard of Sabbats. Those would be our solar holidays or our solar high days. Sabbats would be things like equinoxes, solstices, and our cross-quarter holidays on the wheel of the year. Esbats are typically broken up between each full moon. So an esbat is essentially just a really fancy way of saying a full moon. Covering those sacred esbats and breaking all of them down, as well as the moon's relationship with the zodiac and the moon's phases between new moon, dark moon, waxing moon, full moon, waning moon, and understanding the moon's language when it is amplified by one of the signs of the 12 uh, zodiac of the moon and the sacred esbats can connect you deeper to your own cycles and rhythms and strengthen your spirit as well as add an additional layer to your personal practice. When we understand the moon and how the moon can influence our craft and how we can properly cast spells and perform ceremonial or folk magic during specific phases of the moon, that is only going to lend us further power in our craft. That is only going to strengthen ourselves as witches and connect us deeper to the natural world. So on the lesson plan, I have listed some objectives, and the objectives are essentially what we are going to be hyper-focusing on during the workshop. So for one, of course, we want to learn about the sacred esbats. We want to understand what an esbat is and why esbats are important within the craft. Connecting with these sacred cycles and rhythms like I said, can only improve your craft. So if you're interested in the moon or you're interested in lunar astrology, this is definitely a great workshop for you. And I think, and I will talk about this a little bit more in the class itself, but one of the things that is so fascinating about um, Esbats is that they are very influenced by the culture and geographic location that observes them. So when we are going over Esbats here in North America, we are going to be taking a look at a lot of indigenous influence um, because this has to do with the culture that has named these Esbats. 
as a witch who lives in North America, paying homage to the land that we live on and connecting ourselves with the spirits of these lands, connecting ourselves with the, the names of these moons from the land that we live on. So if you talk to a witch in Australia, or if you talk to a witch in the UK, they might have different names for their esbats because esbats follow the natural cycles and seasons of the earth. It was a way of telling time. So connecting ourselves further with these names is really important because they connect us with times of year that these moons arise from. We're also going to be taking a look at how the moon and the zodiac work. You know, what does it mean when we have a full moon in Taurus or a full moon in Aquarius or a full moon in Sagittarius? And how are these moons that illuminate through the Kyklos or the zodiac belt different from each other? Because it's simply not just a full moon. You're going to be taking a look and learning of the Esbats. So for example, the hunter's moon, the thunder moon, the harvest moon, the strawberry moon, the worm moon, these are some examples. So we have certain correspondence that resonates with the moon's name, but then we also are gonna be taking a look at the zodiac. One year we might have a pink moon in Taurus, and the next year maybe we have the pink moon in Sagittarius. These are very different moons with very different energy, and understanding these moons and how this energy operates can only enhance your personal path, your connection to the moon, and also your spell work. Of course, this wouldn't be a workshop about working magic with the moon without talking about the cycles and the phases of the moon. So what sort of magic or spells can we be working during a dark moon versus a full moon or a waxing moon versus a waning moon? This is additional information that you are going to be getting from this workshop and connecting ourselves with the 28 day lunar phase and understanding how that can influence our practice and maybe how we can tweak our spells or our devotion to the moon with the moon's cycles. I highly encourage that if you are going to be taking this class in person at our classroom at the store, or if you are going to be taking this in our online classroom, or if you're taking this as a self-taught method via Patreon, I highly encourage that you have a pen and a notebook because you are definitely going to want to take notes and they are going to be prompts for you to kind of highlight important and specific things to make sure that you retain this information. And thus for you can apply this knowledge and this information further into your practice. I'm very excited that we are going to be doing this workshop again. This is absolutely one of my favorite workshops. And it's something that I think sometimes is overlooked um, when it comes to the occult and witchcraft um, is we don't always think about planetary values or lunar values. And if you are a witch or a practitioner who doesn't necessarily utilize the cycles of the moon or planetary factors, that is totally fine. Um, and I'm not at all dissing any of that. I'm just saying, take a look at what we have and kind of look into what we're talking about when we talk about working with the moon because you have nothing to lose by working with the moon and the cycles of the moon and only more intention to layer onto your practice. So if this is not your tea, that's fine. You know, there are plenty of witches who don't necessarily work with the cycles of the moon. But this is something that can only aid you further and add more strength and more power to your rituals, to your spells. And even if you're not necessarily um, practicing magic, this can also correlate into lunar ceremonies or rituals or, um, you know, manifestation rituals. You don't necessarily have to be a witch in order to get something um, out of this workshop. So I hope all of you uh, have enjoyed this. Um, I'm super excited to bring this back into 2021. And for those of you who I will see in the classroom or online, um, can't wait. And for those of you taking this self-taught on Patreon, shoot me a message and let me know if you have any questions. Um, I will be posting the full lecture and documents later to Patreon. And of course, for all of my Patreon followers, I appreciate all of your support. And as always, if you guys have any questions, you guys definitely take priority in my list. But but if any of you who are not on my Patreon have any questions, please leave those down below as well, and I would be happy to answer those. Until next time, blessed be.